Hey there, it's Brie, and this is my very first tea chat. So back when I used to update my blog regularly, which I hope to start doing again soon, I used to have this series that I would do every month and I called it Tea Chats. And it was basically as if you and I were sitting having tea or coffee or wine and just talking about what has been happening in our lives over the past month. So I thought that it would be fun to do that on my channel, but basically it's just me talking about things that I did over the month, thing, what I'm currently reading, what I'm eating, what my favorites are. I thought it would be fun to just sit and chat for a little bit, get personal, and still talk a little bit about books, but mostly just talk about like what's going on in my life. And then maybe we can chat down in the comments and you guys can let me know what you've been up to. So I thought I'd start with what's been going on in November, what I've been up to in November. Obviously, like I said, I've been sheltering in place, so I haven't really gone anywhere or done anything super exciting, but I have done things from home that were kind of interesting. Interesting. One thing that I did this month that was kind of interesting was I met with a nutritionist for the first time. You may or may not know I have multiple sclerosis and one of the ways I'm managing my flare-ups is with lifestyle change and one of the biggest things is diet change. So I have a very strict diet that I'm on. It's the autoimmune paleo diet with a mix of walls protocol that I do and I'm pretty strict with it. I haven't had a single cheat day in over a year and I've been doing this diet for over a year and I just wanted to make sure that I'm getting getting all the nutrients and everything that I need. So I wanted to talk to a nutritionist. And I've been wanting to do this for a while. So I asked my doctor, who is a functional medicine doctor. She's a doctor, but she also is very holistic in her approach. I asked her for a recommendation for a nutritionist and she recommended me her. And I ended up meeting with her virtually. We just met through Zoom. And we just talked about, you know, my diet. I had to record my eating habits for a few days before we met. And she looked it over. I gave her like my blood test results and everything. She wants to do more testing, but ultimately what she said, she's like, your diet is great. She did want me to add more fermented foods, which is why I started having kombucha every single day. So I know like we turned the kombucha challenge into like a fun thing, but I actually do it because I have to. <laughs> it's like for health reasons. So the only change she really had to my diet was to add more fermented foods for like probiotics and gut health and also add more protein. So I've been doing that as much as I can. I love my doctor. I love my doctor's personality. I love my therapist. I felt like I didn't quite have the connection with my nutritionist as I did with them. So I might keep looking. She does want me to do another test that's super, super expensive. And I'm just, I'm kind of debating on whether I'm going to do it or not. I might keep looking for another nutritionist, but it's really expensive to meet with nutritionists. So I don't know, we'll see. But I did meet with her and it was it was nice to get validation that what I'm doing is helpful because she validated a lot of what I'm doing and a lot of like why I'm doing it and everything. And it's always nice to hear that I'm doing well on it, especially since there's a lot of conflicting information out there. And then I also participated in the Paranormal Romance Readathon. There were two readathons that were paranormal. It was Love in the Night and Paranormal Romance Readathon. I really only participated in the Paranormal Romance Readathon just because I kind of was like over paranormal romance by the time Love in the Night started. But I did end up rereading one of my favorite paranormal romance series that I had been wanting to reread for a while. So it was really nice to reread that. Also election day happened or it was more like election weeks happened. Oh my gosh, it was so freaking stressful. I can't even tell you that those few days were so stressful and it's so hard. Like I'm such an impatient person. So waiting to hear the final results and everything was just so freaking nerve wracking. My brother's birthday was also this month. He's really hard to buy for because he's the type of person where if he wants something, he'll just get it. So it's hard to buy him things. And I love giving gifts to people, especially my siblings. And I like to be kind of creative with, with it. And everything that I was like coming up with like he already had. <laughs> so when I asked him what he wanted, he was like, oh, just get me a Henley shirt or just want a Henley shirt. I was like, that's boring. So what I ended up doing was buying him a Stitch Fix box because Stitch Fix has guy boxes now. And he, my brother is very into like fashion and stuff. Like he's very conscious of how he dresses and how he looks. Like he takes really, really good care of himself. So I know that he likes to dress really nice. And I thought that he would really like having a personal shopper and having the convenience because he's not really, he doesn't like going shopping, but he 
he likes dressing nice. So I thought this was kind of perfect. So I got him a gift card or bought him a box of Stitch Fix and he ended up buying a few things. Like I had him FaceTime me when he got the box and then he was showing me the clothes that he got and stuff. It was, it was really fun. So I always feel like boxes like that are always fun gifts. And then I had the Historical Romance Live show with Jen this month. And it was funny because I think really her and I just wanted to talk to each other and we just wanted to hang out and she was already doing like a historical romance um, live show. And so she asked me to be on it, even though I'm kind of new to historical romance, but it was a really fun conversation. And her and I had just done a, a buddy read too. So we talked a little bit about the books that we read together. And I had read a few books that she had already read. And, you know, we talked a little bit about those. So that's always fun. I love doing live shows with my friends. And then Romancing the Runoff Auction happened this month as well. And... <laughs> I was getting outbid on everything like things. It, this is amazing, but also like completely unattainable for someone with my budget. Like the books that I wanted ended up selling for like hundreds of dollars and I just, I couldn't manage it. But what was nice was they had some buy it now options. So I was able to buy two buy it now books. I think I got the physical signed copy of um, Queen Takes Night by Jolie Sue Burkhart, which I loved. And I also got, um, I forget what it's called, but it's a Courtney Milan book that she had in Buy It Now and it was signed and everything. So I was, I was glad that I was able to participate in it and like give something toward that auction and like get something without having to spend hundreds of dollars. And then I also had my Thanksgiving vacation. I had a week long vacation for Thanksgiving. I did a whole reading vlog where I read Christmas novellas. It was ridiculous. I talk a lot more about that week in that reading vlog. I'll link it down below. And then I also participated in a read along live on Kayla's channel that week. That was really fun because I was reading a Christmas Dickens and I was just like we were reading during that live show and I was like dying laughing as I was reading that book it was so freaking hilarious and ridiculous and then also for Thanksgiving that week it was it's hard because Thanksgiving is a big day where you know we hang out and spend time with family and I'm super super close to my family so it was really hard not being with them but it was also it was also nice just having a low-key Thanksgiving and having all food that I can eat and not having to have any food here that I couldn't eat so that was kind of nice and then we just had a little short Zoom with my family. And I mean, it's it's a little bit sad, a little bit melancholy, but we made the best out of it. And then that weekend, we also had our Sick Chicks live show, which I have been so excited for for weeks. So this was an idea that Avery and I had a few months ago, actually, and we finally made it come to life. It's a handful of us who have chronic illnesses, and we just answered a bunch of questions about that. Izzy moderated it. It was me, Tori, Crystal, and Riley, and we all just talked about our different chronic illnesses. It was great because we all have different chronic illnesses, so we all had different experiences. Like Tori was diagnosed when she was a child with rheumatoid arthritis. I was diagnosed only a little over a year ago. Riley was diagnosed. She was pretty young, too, and Avery I think was in high school and then Crystal like was just diagnosed recently and we all have different illnesses and it was just interesting seeing what we had in common and the different things that we have to deal with and everything and just very eye-opening like the chat was amazing I wish I could have paid more attention to it but I was kind of involved in the conversation but the chat was so great because there were a lot of people who were also dealing with chronic illnesses and they had a lot of really good things to say there were great questions Izzy did great at moderating it I'm really glad that we thought to have a moderator because it would have been really hard to kind of manage the chat and also like answer the questions that we already had and organize them and stuff. And Izzy really took initiative and like organized the questions and kept us on track and everything. And we ended up talking for almost four hours because we just kept going. Like we had the private chat in StreamYard and it was at first I was telling them, I was like, okay, so let's keep it under two hours. We had barely finished answering the first question. It was like an hour into it. <laughs> And so I was like, guys, I'm willing to stay on if you guys are like, you don't have to. And they're like, oh, yeah, let's stay on. So we just we kept going and we even talked for a little bit after. But I feel like it really bonded us together because it's such an isolating thing when you're diagnosed, especially when you're surrounded by healthy people. And there's something about finding people who not only love books like you do, which is its own little niche, but are also booktubers, but also have a chronic illness. And especially like with me and Tori, both of us are doing like the diet thing. We're handling it without medication. And that's a whole other ball game that's also very isolating. It's so nice to have her to turn to 
to talk to and not feel so alone because sometimes we do. Sometimes it just it gets very lonely having to deal with it and overwhelming and everything. So it's just nice to have those people. And I feel like I just feel a lot closer to them now because of that. Also closer to a lot of people that were in the chat and stuff. And some people who had no idea about chronic illness, they don't have to deal with it, but they were still there and supportive and trying to learn. And I just, it was such... It was such a great night. And the video, the live stream is up on my channel. If you guys want to watch it, I'll link it down below. I used to get panic attacks like pretty much at least three or four times a week. They were pretty bad for years and years. For a good over a decade, I was getting really, really bad panic attacks all the time, all the way up until I started my new diet. And as soon as I started the diet, I hadn't had a panic attack in over a year. But then I ended up having one that Thanksgiving week. I think it was like Tuesday or something. I had a panic attack. I had woken up at like one o'clock, one or two o'clock in the morning. And I was already like anxious and feeling a little bit nauseous. And I had a panic attack. And it was like the first time in over a year that I had a panic attack. But what was interesting about it was I was able to completely come out of it within like 20 minutes. And that's unheard of. Usually when I have a panic attack, it ebbs and flows for at least four, five, six hours, sometimes longer. And then it resonates like the entire next day. I'm feeling the side effects of it. But this time it was like a quick thing and then it was gone. I, I know that my diet has a lot to do with it. It's There have been studies that have shown that certain foods that you eat and just eating healthier in general will help reduce panic attacks, specifically the AIP diet that I do. So I know that that has had an effect on my anxiety and I'm sure like quarantine not having the obligation of having to go different places probably has helped. But I'm also surprised that with the whole pandemic and everything, especially since my anxiety revolves a lot around health issues, I'm very surprised that I haven't had panic attacks at all during this pandemic except for that day. But it was so brief and I was able to take care of it quickly. And really all I did was listen to a meditation from, on YouTube for panic attacks. And I chewed on some minty gum, drank some iced water, and I felt better and it was great. I mean, it's always, whenever you have a panic attack, it almost is like a vicious cycle because then you start worrying about when the next time you're going to have a panic attack is and like if your heart starts to elevate or something and you don't know if you're starting to have a panic attack because you're worrying about having a panic attack and it just becomes like this whole vicious cycle. So I still am feeling that a little bit. Like I feel like I was get finally getting to a point after a year, like being okay and not constantly worrying when my next panic attack was going to come. And I feel like I've regressed a little bit after that, but it was nice knowing that it was so short-lived and almost kind of forgettable, which is, which is saying something. And I've been feeling pretty good this month, minus the fact that I got a UTI recently and I hadn't had one of those in a while. Um, so I started back on the supplement that my doctor had put me on before when my UTIs were an issue. So with multiple sclerosis UTIs, frequent UTIs is pretty common. I have a prescription that I just like always like it's an ongoing thing that they'll just refill for me anytime because I get that I used to get them so frequently. It'd been a while since I had one and I got one and it's always a little disheartening, especially when you put so much effort into eating healthy and everything. When you do get sick, it's like, man, I've been doing all this work. Like, why? Why did I get sick again? So, and I just, it, it felt awful and it was just kind of an awful week that week too, just because I was feeling bad, but I still had to like help the girls with e-learning and work full time and everything. So that was hard, but you know, after a couple of days, I started feeling better, which is nice, but there, it's always in the back of my mind, like, especially when it comes to having MS, what if this is something bigger? What if it turns into something worse? Like, is this a flare up, blah, blah, blah. So it's not just a typical, like someone gets a UTI, they take some antibiotics, they feel better. Like for me, there's like this whole like weight. I am feeling better now, which is nice. And I am back on the supplement that my doctor wanted me to take. And also when I had a UTI last time, she also wanted me to drink aloe juice regularly. And that's one thing that I kept forgetting to buy it, buy more aloe juice from the grocery store. So it'd been a few weeks since I'd had my aloe juice. So I started doing that again. So hopefully incorporating that and just doing better that way will be helpful. Even though the supplement that she has me take is so freaking expensive. Ugh. So as far as the videos that went up in November, I thought I would talk about all the videos that I uploaded in November. I had my November TBR, like all the usuals, like I had my TBR for November. I posted my October wrap up. I had my recent reads. I also did a video on all of my Audible Plus favorites. So all of the books that I love that are on Audible Plus since Audible Escape went away and now we have Audible Plus. In case you guys want to check that out, fair warning, there's not a lot. 
selection is kind of crap. I also did a book call and I did a sweet and swoony romance rec video that was inspired by Smitten by Lauren Rowe. I just wanted something fairly low angst and just sweet and swoony and cute kind of books. So I have a whole rec video of all of those type of books. Also, I did a rec video for retellings. I was just going to do a fairy tale retellings, but I realized that there's a lot of different types of retellings that I really like. So it's not just fairy tales, it's retellings in general. I also did my romance takeover TBR video because the romance takeover is actually this month in December and I ended up choosing only books that are on my bookshelf and I've actually read most of them and I've loved a lot of them. I also did a very exciting because I hit 5k this month too which was huge and in celebration of that I listed all of my favorite booktubers that had under a thousand subscribers. I wanted to do it a little bit different, so I had them send in clips talking about their channel and also some of their favorite tropes and their favorite books. So there's a lot of really great recommendations in that video too from them. And then I also did my Thanksgiving reading vlog, which I talked about and it's like an hour and a half long. Like I'm no longer, I decided that I'm no longer gonna be afraid of doing longer videos. I used to always get anxious when my videos were over like a half hour, but but now I figure, you know, if you want to watch it, then watch it. If you don't, then skip it and that's fine. Like I need to not worry about that because I know that there are a lot of you out there who like longer videos and who appreciate them and who actually watch them. And so those videos are for you. If they're not for you, then you can skip it and it's okay. All right. So as for what I'm currently reading, I am reading Breaking Gravity. It's the second book in the Fall Back series by Autumn Gray. I am really, really enjoying it. I'm only a little bit into it right now. I'm only read like the first part of it. But it is a teacher-student romance, except it's new adult. She's in college. She's his TA. He is a former cellist who got injured in, like, a really tragic accident that killed his wife. And he, like, his arm or his shoulder is in a lot of pain, so he can't play the cello anymore. And he used to be, like, a really famous cellist. But now he's, like, teaching this class, and she's a aspiring cellist, and it's their romance. Um, I'm not very much into it, but it's good. I mean, it's Autumn Gray. I love Autumn Gray. And then I'm also reading The Obsession. It is the Filthy Rich Americans by Nikki Sloan series. I just finished for the Romance Takeover Readathon. I just finished um, the first book, The Initiation. Holy crap. Like this book or this series is one of those series where I'm reading it and I'm like, why do I like this? Like, why am I okay with what's happening in these books? It's really, really good. And I don't normally like reading about entitled wealthy people. Like that kind of gets on my nerves. But there's something different about this one. I have a feeling Nikki Sloan is going to be a new favorite author. But I have a feeling I'm going to have to binge this series because there's a lot happening and I need to know what's happening. As far as what I've been watching, I don't watch a lot of TV. I talk about this all the time. People always ask how I read so many books and it's because I don't re watch like a lot of TV and movies. I just don't. I much prefer listening to an audiobook or reading. If I do watch something, I'm watching booktube videos. People are doing Vlogmas now and I've been really good about catching up with my watch later list. Kind of up to date. I haven't watched the the latest videos that have come out like today the weekend's over so it might be a little while till I catch up but everyone's been doing vlogmas videos so I've been watching those I did end up watching a handful of cheesy Netflix holiday movies and I also resubscribe to passion flicks I always resubscribe when they have a new movie and then I unsubscribe because they don't have enough new movies like coming out consistently, but I resubscribed because the last part of Gabriel's Inferno came out. And I love Passion Flicks. I feel like Passion Flicks doesn't get enough love, but I love that they are making romance movies, like romance novels into movies. Like I so appreciate that. They're cheesy. They're not great quality, but I still love it. Downloaded that and I watched that movie. It's fine. Like I've never read Gabriel's Inferno, but the movies are they're fine. They're not anything groundbreaking, but if you like Hallmark type romances, you'll probably like it. And then also I did watch Taylor Swift's Folklore on Disney Plus, her little like folklore concert thing. I could watch her talk about making music for like ever. I love the way she talks about how her brain works when she's writing music. It's just, it's awesome. So I really enjoyed that. And then as for what I've been eating this month, some of my favorite things I've eaten this month, I made stuffed dates for the first time for Thanksgiving and I ended up making it again like the following week. So we love dates around here. Dates are our dessert of choice. It tastes like caramel to me. So they're amazing and especially when you stuff them. So we get like the medjool dates that still have the pits in it. So I took the pits out. I put some vegan cheese, vegan no soy cheese 
in there. It's like a feta cheese. I stuffed it with that and then I wrapped it in prosciutto and I put it in the oven and it was yummy. I've also been drinking all the kombucha in the world and I've been drinking aloe again. So very healthy stuff. And then as far as what I've been listening to, obviously audiobooks. I'm constantly listening to audiobooks. I'm never not listening to an audiobook when I have a chance. I also have in November listened to a lot of Christmas music. Leslie Odom Jr. in the original Hamilton class, he played Burr. I love his voice. I'm obsessed with him. He came out with a Christmas album that's really, really good. The girls love the song Snow, and I love that one too. And then um, I really like the new Shawn Mendes song that he has with Justin Bieber. I think it's called Monster. I really like that song. I've been listening to that. In one of the cheesy Christmas movies, I think it's like the the Switch one, the one that's like super popular that everyone likes. The guy who plays the prince in that he sings the song Bring in the Snow on there and I love that song so I've been listening to that song a lot. And then as for things that I've been obsessing over in November, I have been obsessing over Trisha Levenseller. I binged all of her books. I own all of them in physical format except for the one that's like obviously not out yet. I read The Shadows Between Us a few months ago and became obsessed with it and then I recently read Daughter of the Pirate King, immediately started reading Daughter of the Siren King and immediately read Warrior of the Wild. So so I have been obsessed with Trisha Levenseller. I cannot wait till she comes out with her next book. She's so freaking good. She writes a ruthless badass heroine like nobody's business and her romances are fantastic. I've also been super into like my bullet journal because I'm prepping my planner and my bullet journal and like all of my journals, honestly. I've been super into planning because we're coming up on the new year. I just started an art journal also. So I have a bullet journal, I have an art journal, I have a reading journal, I have like a tracker, I have all sorts of things. I'm gonna be doing a whole video about all the ways I plan and all the journals and planners that I have. But I've been so obsessed with that, which means I've also been obsessed with stationery, which also means I've been buying way too many stationery things. Like I discovered Stationery Pal, which is an online shop that sells cheap stationery and it's amazing. And I bought way too much stuff. I did a haul recently on Instagram and it's it's excessive but it's also amazing and i love it i've been watching a lot of like planning videos and like stationary hauls and stuff like that so now i thought i would talk about my monthly favorites i actually really love when booktubers and like any youtubers at all do their monthly favorites just like things that they've been loving that month so i thought i would do something like that and show you some of my monthly favorites so like i said i've been super obsessive over like planner supplies and stationery so i thought i would show you some of my favorite pens that i've been using like I'm very picky about pens. I typically like them to be pretty thick and to ha be super dark and not skip. And I usually like like gel pens. So I recently discovered the Uniball Vision Elite. These are at 0.8. So I love this pen. This one's, I think, a 0.7 millimeter. This is another OG favorite, the Sarasa 0.7. Love that. I think that's a zebra. Oh, I also really like the Sharpie S gel pens. These pens have been really good too. If I ever have to write in a really small space, I like to use the Pilot G2s, but in the 0.38, good for like small thin lines. So those are the pens that I've been loving lately. And then I just found these, like I just got these not too long ago, but I've been loving them. I found them at Target, Hero Rich Glitter Highlighters. It's by Zebra, but they're glitter highlighters, look. So they like, they're highlighters, just like regular highlighters, but they're glitter. Like, I'm so excited about this. Like, I am such a sucker for stationery. If you give me something exciting like this, like, how can I not? Like I said, I got them at Target and they are kind of expensive, fair warning, but it's worth it to me. Another thing that I bought in November that I've been absolutely loving, okay, granted, I've only used one thing on it. It is my Canon Ivy little photo printer. This prints photo stickers. They're three by eight, I think. Um, and it's so freaking cute. I got it in the rose gold it's portable or you can like plug it in and use it and I love it It's perfect if you like bullet journaling So basically with this you can take any picture that's on your phone and print it out and it turns it into like a cute little Perfectly sized picture that also is a sticker. So this is my bullet journal. I printed this picture out and then I have been super obsessed, and not just this month, but for a long time, I've been obsessed with these notebooks that I can only find at Marshalls. So anytime I see them at Marshalls, I hoard them and I buy like a bunch of them because I'm afraid that I'm not gonna be able to find them again. I like to use these spiral bound notebooks that are like higher quality for just like taking notes for videos and just taking notes like in general while I'm working and making to-do lists. I use it for just like miscellaneous, like 
like brain dump type things. I use these notebooks for that. And I love them because they have super thick paper. So nothing like bleeds through it unless you use like a permanent marker and you're like scribbling. And it's just really, really high quality paper, really, really high quality spiral bound notebooks. And they're a great size. It's called like the all purpose notebook. They look like this and they always have fun designs on them. So it's by Fringe Studio. And I've not been able to find them anywhere else. Can I tell you I've been hoarding them? I mean, I've been hoarding them. This isn't even all of them. Like I have like 10 maybe in a backlog. The cover is like this faux leather and then the pages are just nice and thick. It's just pretty like the spiral bounds are like rose gold and stuff, but the pages are really thick and I love them and I hoard them. What's funny is I'm pretty sure that Chloe from Always Booked, she mentioned this in her favorites too because she does the favorite uh, monthly favorites video also, but she mentioned the same thing in her monthly favorites and I've been using this as well. It is the native deodorant. I have had such a hard time finding natural deodorant that doesn't irritate my armpits, but also like works really well. It has a really good texture. It comes in a bunch of fun scents. Like the one that I'm using is the, what is it? Sugar cookie. I will say though, the downside with this deodorant is that it's not antiperspirant because I doubt that there's like a natural antiperspirant because it's antiperspirant that has like the awful chemicals in it. I haven't been able to find one that has really good ingredients that's antiperspirant. It's so funny. My daughter's like, oh, you smell like cookies. And I'm like, yeah, that's my deodorant. <laughs> I also recently upgraded my AirPods. I ended up getting the AirPods Pros and I have been loving them. To be fair, the only headphones that have ever really fit in my ears were the Apple headphones. So these aren't like your typical Apple headphones, like they're shaped a little bit differently. So these don't stick in my ears quite as well, but the noise canceling is amazing in this. And they have like this feature in them where it has like a surround sound and it is so freaky how they can do surround sound in AirPods. It's absolutely crazy. And I also love my case. Like my case is like this rose gold sparkly case. It's so me and I'm obsessed with it. The other good thing about these versus the regular AirPods is that the sound is a lot better, like the microphone's a lot better. So I can use these on Zoom calls now and not sound weird and like live shows and stuff, I could use these and it sounds a lot better. Also, the battery life is a lot better on these. So for those of you who are big makeup people like me, but you kind of suck at cleaning your brushes, this is like a game changer. This is the Ulta Beauty um, shadow switching pan. This is freaking brilliant. I just got a new one. I had one for a really long time and I just got this one not too long ago. So it's a lot cleaner than my other one was, but all it is really is just a rough sponge here. And then like a regular sponge here, you can dampen this, but what it does is you take like, let's say you're using like, I'm wearing like green eyeshadow right now. If I want to switch to a different color and not get green on it, you just rub your brush dry in this and it takes all of the shadow off of it. So you have basically a clean brush and you can switch to a different color without worrying about blending colors. It's freaking amazing and it works really, 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 really good. I love this thing and I highly recommend it. It's my favorite. While we're talking about makeup, I wanna talk about two makeup items that I've been loving aside from that one. And this one I just discovered the Micro Felt Tip Liner the black in Black by Ulta Beauty. I've been on the search for a felt tip eyeliner that doesn't suck for the longest time. I am so picky about my felt tip eyeliners. It's not too wobbly and I have enough control over it, but also not too, too firm. Like I'm very picky and it needs to be felt tip. Like that's the only way I can do a liquid eyeliner is if it's felt tip. And I have been loving, loving, loving this one. I can get a nice wing with this eyeliner. I also am so obsessed with ColourPop's Luxe lipstick. So ColourPop's Luxe liquid lipsticks are amazing. I'm not the biggest fan of ColourPop's ultra matte lipsticks or even their ultra satin lipsticks, liquid lipsticks. I, do, I don't mind their ultra blotted lips, but I've never been a huge fan of their liquid lipsticks in general. But when they came out with these Luxe lipsticks, the formula is much more whipped and not as drying and just much more comfortable to wear. I'm actually wearing this color right now. This one is, it's called Southbound and it's like this a darker red color. The formula is really great. It has a nice applicator also. 
and it's nice and small. They're not too big and they're super cute packaging. I have these in so many different colors. And then last but not least, this is kind of random. I recently switched over to more natural laundry detergent, but I also got rid of dryer sheets and I got rid of fabric softener and instead have been using wool dryer balls. So you can buy these on Etsy as well, like homemade ones, like that people have actually made from like their sheep. But I just bought these from Target. It came in a three pack. You just throw them in your dryer with your clothes and you don't need a dryer sheet. You can just use these. And if you are looking for scent, which I feel like if you use scent boosters, you don't really need to. And I do, I use the method ones. If you wanted to add scent to it, you could drop a few drops of essential oils onto these dryer balls and just put it in the dryer and it's pretty great. They're a sustainable alternative to dryer sheets without like the chemicals or anything. So pretty awesome. I love them. I've been using them. I only have three that I just throw in my dryer and it's been working great. As for what's coming up in December. So we're currently in December, but what I have coming up, I'm going to do some behind the scenes videos. I'm going to do a planning video. I just filmed a Q&A with JT. Yeah, so I have some really fun, exciting videos coming up this month. All right, guys, that's it. That was my November. That was our little tea chat. I hope you guys enjoyed this little personal kind of different type of video. Let me know down below if you want videos like this every month. Taking the time to actually sit down and think about all the things that I did this month was actually nice and kind of reflect on it and stuff. So let me know down below if you like these kind of videos and I'll definitely do it some more. Thank you so much for watching and as always, happy reading.